Hi everyone. I have time to sneak in one last video here. I'm going to call this Rapture May 27th. And I've uh, this will be the fourth um, video in a series, so uh, would encourage anybody that has their uh, interest stirred up uh, to watch all four and read the commentaries. So this is a bit of a wrap up. I had loose ends from my last video that um, didn't quite bring everything all together. And um, I've been working on the commentary, but uh, anyway, I thought best uh, to do this verbally. Um, I'm calling it Rapture May 27th, just to draw people's attention to the whole concept. And what I explained, um, in the past three episodes that the, the whole rapture idea is, in my opinion, is quite um, misunderstood. And what we're looking at here, and this is a, a pr proposed scenario, a speculation, uh, based on all kinds of things, but one of them is most, many people can see clearly that our world is uh, coming into a place of more and more and more troubles. We are coming to a crisis in many, many ways. And uh, all that would point to what some would call the end of the world, the apocalypse, the, the uh, Great Tribulation, etc. God does call it the Great Tribulation. He calls it the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. He calls it that day, that, that dark and gloomy day. And he calls it the refiner's fire because he has a very specific purpose in the Great Tribulation, and that is to create his first fruits. So now back this all up. Uh, the whole concept of the, the rapture, is uh, it for most or for lots of believers, it points towards two scriptures, one found in 1 Thessalonians um, 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. And But what I want to do is add a Revelation 11, and I'm going to say it's uh, uh, 1 to 13. Yeah, the, the, the entire chapter that those three sets of scriptures are talking about the same thing. And what it is, is the end of the period of time of three and a half years that the two witnesses who are the two houses of Israel, uh, the time that they finish their witness, it takes three and a half years. And God describes that in Re Revelation 11, but it's, it is described in many other places in Joel Two is one of them where he talks about his army and uh, that group of two witnesses made up of about one and a half million people. Remember we have a, a bride made up of 144,000 people and then we have the group of attendants which is 10 times that amount, 1,440,000. So that's why I say approximately one and a half million people and what I'm proposing is that uh, on this Feast of First Fruits, so, uh, sorry, then ending on the Feast of Weeks, that as Jubilee 6, that's all one festival. You count seven sevens in between, seven full, full weeks, complete weeks, uh, consisting of six working days and one Sabbath, which the moon points out. So covered all those details. We're in in a couple of days and for lots of people it'll be one day or on that day uh, uh, given time for this video to get out and get get spread around if the, uh, to whoever the Lord raises up to pay attention that these things are going to happen and as I said this is a good time for this to happen in our human um, reasoning perspective based on scripture okay we're putting a whole lot of things together we're not just 
uh, going at this without any background at all, not knowing the scriptures, not having gone through the process of learning to hear God's voice, um, learning to correctly divide the word of God. That is, uh, there is not several ways to interpret um, truth. There is just one truth. Now, our job as humans is to find it, and you use the tools God gives us to find it. Anyway, now let's back up to this to this rapture idea. So uh, I'm proposing that in a couple of days, May 27th, uh, for different places around the world, it may be the 26th or 8th, but it's the, the ending of the day of the full moon. Remember, day, God's days start at sunset, so you've watched the spectacle of the full moon uh, the day before, which is the indication of the second Sabbath in the four Sabbath cycle, continually goes on in the sky. We've been counting seven Sabbath cycles since the Feast of First Fruits. That's the day Yeshua rose from the dead. He is the first of the first fruits, so we've counted out our seven weeks. We're now almost finished counting the seventh week, and we'll know it's finished when we come to that Sabbath day. And it's going to be a full moon. And uh, wherever you are on earth, wherever you are, let's ask the Lord to open the skies to clear them so that we can all see the spectacle of the full moon, the moon coming up in the eastern sky, and the sun going down in the western sky and then the next morning you see them looking at each other for about an hour as, as i described in my last video that's the sabbath day okay so now we know the very next day is the feast of weeks for most people i think <laughs> if they look on their calendar the 27th is that evening before you know our we're trying to describe things using a Babylonian system and then uh, over, overlay it on God's system. Anyway, that makes it clear enough if you watch for the signs. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Everything in God's system goes by signs. All of his appointed times are illustrated to us by signs from the sun and the moon. And then the stars have their place too. Uh, September 23rd, 2017. Anyway, so what I'm proposing is that uh, what we'll see, I'm speculating, proposing, uh, that we will see the Lord come as a thief in the night and identify those 144,000 people. And then, of course, within a very short time, the the attendants will know who they are because they've been left out of this group. And I don't know how the Lord will do these things. But uh, this whole event does not qualify as uh, what Christians have come to know as the, as the rapture. That would be, uh, that would better fit at the end of the three and a half year teaching period. See this, we always thought of, you know, this is one of the mysteries of the Lord, that the two witnesses were two people. So then when we expand it to one and a half million people, uh, they preach, for th teach, uh, provide um, absolute proof that uh, the, the Lord is the Lord, that God is in control of everything, that he wants us all to repent of our sins and if we do not make that choice to change the course of our lives then we will die in our sins and then the ones that choose that make that choice to, to repent and believe God they will have eternal life now there's more to the story but let's just stick to the uh, this proposal of what is the rapture. So the first event we're looking at 
is the Lord Cummings of Thief in the Night, and then three and a half years from now is the event when these hundred one one and a half million people die. You read that in Revelation eleven. They are killed and they lay dead in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half year, days, and then as the whole world watches via media, these one and a half million people rise and meet the Lord in there. That would qualify for First um, Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. And, of course, we're talking about Revelation um, 11 here. So they're all three the same thing. This is what I'm proposing. And then we have another event that qualifies for a rapture. So as Julie has, Wedby has pointed out, uh, there will be multiple translations and raptures, if you want to call it that, that at the very end of the Great Tribulation, so now we're talking 46 years from now, there, thereabouts, haven't done the math uh, exactly, but uh, we have this 50-year Great Tribulation. We're already at year three and a half, and we're looking at the next stage, the three and a half years of the teaching and preaching of the two witnesses. And then we have to find this third group of, of people. 36 million is the number I've pointed out from the book of Acts, chapter 2. You can go back in a number of episodes to see where those numbers come from. That last group of 36 million will not be identified for till the end of this jubilee cycle. When they make it through this last 40 year trek through the wilderness, prove themselves by being obedient to the Lord, just like Joshua and Caleb were the only two that started the journey, and that is they were 20 years and older. Uh, those were the only two that proved their obedience by obeying God, in particular, uh, obeying his Torah. So that will be the same challenge for this last final group of people. And the indication is only 10% will be rendered out in the refiner's fire from the 360 million that start the journey. Uh, the 10% that's rendered out will be the guests to the wedding, the third and final group of first fruits. And then God will take those three groups of first fruits. And uh, to finish this thought, they need to be translated. So that would be another application or uh, event where we could call what Christians call a rapture. Um, They're right at the end of the Great Tribulation. Because if you read my commentary from the last episode, I added these details that... Uh, when you look at Revelation 19, we see two things there. We see the preparations for the wedding supper, but we also see the, the um, armies of heaven on white horses, and they destroy this last stand of Satan and his evil armies that have surrounded Jerusalem. So this last group of 36 million has to be translated made into spirit beings, and so that would be a second place for the so-called rapture. So anyway, I know this is, uh, we're, we're always looking in a glass darkly, or uh, another way to put it is looking through a dark glass so we don't see that clearly. That's a metaphor that was used by, by Paul. Um, I think it was Paul. But God is giving us more and more revelation as we get closer and closer to uh, seeing things unfold. So we get to see, and the wise thing to do is be always ready. So again, I'll, I'll say this, that we, have, uh, we still have a couple of days to repent. Repentance is always the same thing. We have to repent of sin. And sin is the transgression of the Torah. That's 1 John 3, 4. Christianity and Judaism do not teach that 
basic bottom line. So we've been lied to by the angel of light. We need to know what sin is to be able to repent of it. Now, I got quite a bit of time. I think this will be short. So I'm, I'm just going to make some a uh, little bit of uh, additions following up my last video. I had explained the thousand years as a type of an experiment. And that uh, wasn't quite the right word, but I didn't finish the whole thing. What God is doing is, this is the last time we're going to see physical human beings for the thousand years. There will be physical human beings, the, the, the people who have qualified to be among the first fruits, they will be the teachers, and they are full spirit beings at this point, but there's not that many, like we're talking 37 and a half million people total. And we have billions upon billions of people that have lived and died. And uh, now I'm getting ahead of the story, but God says he's going to raise them all to life at the end of the thousand years. But during the thousand years, the physical human beings that have survived the Great Tribulation, they will be taught God's ways, and the teachers will be right there beside them. And as the scripture says, uh, it says, they will, they will show up in an instant and say, this is the way to walk walk you in it. In other words, any temptation to to sin uh, will be instantly addressed and people will not, and that's why I said it was, it's sort of like a dictatorship. You'll be forced to do everything God's way. And the, the point of this experiment, and again, I'm speaking using my own opinions, my, my own story of how this unfolds, God is illustrating that if we do things his way, and I, I pointed out if you read from Ezekiel 40 to 48, and there's lots of other places. Jeremiah has a long section too. Uh, if we do things God's way, or when we do things God's way, and there will be a temple, there will be sacrifices, there will be priests, there will be everything. Everything will be done God's way. And it'll work perfectly. That's the point of the so-called experiment. I was trying to get to that place and I didn't finish. What we're going to see is for a thousand years, the world will run perfectly. We'll have a perfect uh, economy. You'll never see any inflation. We'll have perfect uh, social uh, interactions. There won't be social unrest. There won't be any unhappiness we will have abundance beyond um, imagination the whole world will run perfectly in every way for a thousand years and god what god is doing is illustrating when we obey him things work perfectly and he's given us this six thousand years to be uh, to to experience satan's interference Satan is a rebel, he's a liar, a thief, and a murderer, and he's been the god of this world, so we get to compare a world run by a very dark, rebellious figure, and then compare it to a thousand years of doing everything exactly God's way. So then at the end of the thousand years, that's when we uh, don't have physical human beings anymore. And that's when the temple becomes a spiritual entity. And the, the temple is made up, first of all, by these first fruits. Sorry, first of all, by the cornerstone, who is Yeshua. He's the first of the first fruits. He is the cornerstone of that temple. And then the bride will be the, the main supporting Pillars will try and build a metaphor here, and the, the uh, attendance would be, you know, secondary supporting structure, structural parts, and let's say the the third group, the guests to the wedding, would be the decorative 
uh, embossments all over the temple to beautify it. And, uh, and then it's this whole temple, which is the, um, a living thing made up of these first fruits, will come down to earth, as it says in Revelation, as a bride prepared for her husband. And everything past this point will be spiritual. There won't be physical things left. So then every point of the Torah that applies strictly to physical things will then uh, end its application. That's why Yeshua said that, uh, that uh, not one tiny detail of the Torah will change uh, heaven and earth uh, will will end and the implication was that's when there would be tiny changes in the Torah at the end of the physical heaven and earth so we read about all those things in the book of Revelation and then again in Isaiah 65 we get insights and uh, remember we have these two events that happen at the end of the thousand years preceding this eternal time the eternal kingdom and no I think I got that part explained, the completion of this experiment. Illustration, this illustration of how perfectly things run if we do things God's way and every point of God's way. See, Christians have been taught this idea that there's certain parts of the Torah that are absolutely uh, gone forever. and. Uh, the Lord has made it clear that nothing in the Torah will change except these tiny things at the time when the, there's a new heaven and a new earth. So that's quite a long ways into the future. Right now, every point of the Torah applies and it will right to the end of the thousand years. Okay, enough of that. Now, I have... Uh, couple other things here. I want you to, to take note very, this is very important in Revelation 11, 1 to 13, near the beginning of, of the chapter, it makes this point. It says, go and measure the temple of God. Now that's the church. Go and measure the temple of God, but leave out the outer court. And this ties in with what I was trying to explain about when we do not pay attention to the Torah, we think, we believe what we're, if we've been taught at church that, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff there that has no application, like Jesus did away with it. Uh, Jesus, of course, said he did not come to do away with it. You know, that's Matthew 5, 17 to 19. So if... Uh, if this is if you're finding any of this hard to believe just read that a few times those those three verses and uh, if you out of misteaching first of all uh, out of ignorance which we we are running out of excuses to be ignorant we have all this available to us uh, and and then lastly, out of rebellion. If we don't pay attention to the details of the Torah and how we are connecting our lives, uh, then we will spend a lot of time uh, without the freedom to go into the inner court. That's what it does when we're not following the details the instructions like and i pointed out like if we eat pigs regularly but there's all kinds of things that make us um, on that that cause us to lose our freedom to go into the inner court and that's where god lives when we go to pray we go into the inner court but we're not allowed to if we have made ourselves uh, unacceptable by those three things misteaching ignorance rebellion and uh, we're getting close to the time uh, we have no excuse god will not wink at our ignorance 
this, this time has come where he will not wink at our ignorance. All these things are available to everybody. Um, so anyway, pay close attention that, that the, the people that live in the outer court, which is the vast majority of believers, are not included in this. And so that's what God is explaining here, that uh, just like, in fact, the seven thunders is very, very bad news that the vast majority of the present day church is unacceptable before God because of their, uh, first of all, misteaching, and then secondly, their ignorance, and then thirdly, their rebellion. And uh, we have run out of excuses to be ignorant. Uh, we're out of time. God, God made the timeline. Sooner or later, this had to happen. And if it doesn't uh, start on May 27th, it will eventually. And by all indications, it's very soon that things will escalate into the more difficult parts of the Great Tribulation. Okay, Let's see what else I got here. Um, when I was describing the four things that uh, a true teacher of God teaches, I uh, the third one is that we make that a true teacher will make correct judgments and teachings based on the Torah. I worded it a little bit differently, and I think everybody got the point, but. Uh, when you don't know the Torah, then, of course, you're going to be making all kinds of incorrect assessments. And uh, because most uh, teachers in the Christian and Jewish world have not been taught the, the Torah, the, the Jewish people learn lots about the oral Torah, which there's no such thing. And then in the Christian world, we're just said, oh, well, Jesus did away with it all, which is a lie from the angel of, of light. Now, changing gears a little bit, I just saw this this morning, that we have what could potentially be a very, very large CME hit the earth in a, in a couple of days, which would become very close to coinciding with uh, this, uh, the, Feast of, of, the Feast of Weeks. Anyway, the, in, in the last... Oh, I don't know, I'm going to say months, but it's been ramping up. The sun is becoming more and more active in that there's more and more solar flares, CMEs. And anyway, apparently uh, this just happened that a quite a large comet hit the sun and uh, a solar flare erupted from that spot. And um, by the time that energy, which if I understand the details, takes about 72 hours, but there are variations in this that it could very well hit the Earth directly. And uh, anyone that's familiar with the Carrington event of uh, 100 years ago or so, um, a direct hit from a very large CME will shut down our electrical grid, our communications, our cell systems. It will cause incredible uh, um, sky, uh, what do they call them? Northern lights and southern lights, the aurora borealis. The, anyway, uh, this is a possibility. The thing is, and, and of course, uh, uh, um, oh, yeah, the, a nuclear blast will create the same uh, EMP. Um, anyway, the thing is that we have all kinds of things converging, and sooner or later, we want to, sooner or later, we're going to experience it all. Uh, we're we're looking at a world economy that is just hanging on by a thread. We have a tremendous amount of misinformation about our our current so-called pandemic, which uh, doesn't qualify. 
But, I, I, okay, I'm going to add this one thing. Uh, concerning the, the vaccines that are being pushed in all kinds of different ways. I, this is my opinion that we're being trained for what's coming up directly ahead of us. There's so much fear being generated and promoted for something that's not hardly real. Uh, just for an example, in our present world with about 8 billion, almost 8 billion people, there's 60 million people die every year of all causes put together. We've only seen 3 million die supposedly of coronavirus. We've barely seen anybody die of flu or flu related deaths. In other words, they've uh, misinformed us about what, what's happening. They've called everything coronavirus instead of uh, flus and pneumonias and uh, all those kind of things. Anyway, this is my encouragement that uh, the, the book of Revelation shows us that in the days ahead of us, there's going to be half the world's population die. That's 4 billion people. That's a pandemic. Now, there's uh, lots of causes, not just diseases and, and so on. But you, if you read through the book of Revelation, you first see that a quarter of all people die. That's 2 billion. And then the remainder, a little later on, a third. Uh, so then a third of 6 billion is another 2 billion. So... That's why I say half the world's population dies. That's what to be concerned about. And there will be things going around that are killing people. And what has happened is we've been, the world's population has been filled with fear and they have developed vaccines that uh, have components in them that can kill you. And, uh, I covered this before in past videos, but the, one of the proposed theories is that the elites want to reduce the world's population and they have this all pre-planned and they're going to have us line up for what they call the soft kill, where we just clamor to get our shot that was meant, that's meant to kill us. So anyway, that's a, a speculative Heads up warning that in the end, we want to learn to trust God, not man's ideas of how to solve problems. And vaccines working with viruses have limited abilities, but if done right, they are somewhat effective. But anyway, I feel we're being set up for the next round, so beware. Learn to put your trust in God, not in man's solutions. And uh, enough said on that. I think I covered everything I wanted to. Let me just take a quick look. I think we got her. So, God bless you. And see you, hope to see you in the future one way or another. This is Neil with Rock Our World.